Good day and happy Thanksgiving. There's a lot to be grateful for, but we're going to advise you how to resent all that while being grateful for what threatens you as we present to you our top three Thanksgiving Day tips for obedience. We'll also be covering the nation's top stories this week, like what's going on in the Twitter world? What's the latest racist thing Biden did? There's nothing to see in the Arizona election, is there? Probably not. And because COVID is such a threat, we'll fill you in on the latest new control measures that the globalists are trying to inflict on you for your protection, of course. Starting with Twitter. Over the weekend, new Twitter boss Elon Musk took a dangerous step against censorship when he reinstated President Trump on the platform. Upon reinstatement, Trump's account was set back to zero followers. And after less than three days, he amassed well over 80 million followers. This compared to Biden's 36 million Twitter followers that he's amassed over the course of 15 years, erases any doubt in the minds of dangerous extremists about how Biden definitely beat Trump in 2020. And with his account reinstated, the world could finally see President Trump's tweets from the dreaded January 6th where he was inciting violence. Please support our Capitol Police and law enforcement. They are truly on the side of our country. Stay peaceful. Yikes. Followed by an even more insurrection-y tweet. I am asking for everyone at the US Capitol to remain peaceful. No violence. Remember, we are the party of law and order. Respect the law and our great men and women in blue. Thank you. Truly a danger to society. Thank God what we told you in order to justify silencing a sitting president was the honest to there is no God truth. The 45th president has also officially announced that he'll be running again in 2024. For a scientific perspective on that, let's throw it over to JP who is with Fauci. Take it away. Thank you, Darren. What do you think Trump's chances are in 2024? It came from a bat. Of course it did. It's a good looking shirt, by the way. It's safe and effective. Maybe we should mandate them. Available now in my shop. Back to you in the studio, Darren. It's JP. It doesn't matter. Along with reinstating President Trump, Musk also reinstated Project Veritas, which practices what's called real journalism, and therefore are also just as dangerous as Trump's calls for peace. And also reinstated was a man the left is very obsessed with. Jordan Peterson. Now, as much as we promote defunding the police, because how else are you going to reduce crime? We as a corporation funded by lizard people do not endorse Peterson's calls to defund the thought police. Those are the police we want brutalizing people right in their minds. But as much as people who support free speech and our fascist constitution were celebrating the reinstatement of Trump and others, they did contract a rather nasty case of butt hurt when Musk announced he would not be reinstating Alex Jones on Twitter. Amongst other things, the Infowars conspiracy theorist tends to know things 20 years before everyone else. Take a look. And yes, today in 2002, there is a tyrannical organization calling itself the New World Order pushing for worldwide government, a cashless society, open borders, total and complete tyranny. Haha, <laughs> I'm glad none of that has proven to be true. And it'd be very convenient if we can just keep that guy silent. And lastly in Twitter news, as we've already mercilessly beaten this dead horse to death, outraged over Musk's steps towards free speech, tens of thousands of leftists have declared they're leaving Twitter. Seemingly, not trying to be ironic, they all made these declarations on Twitter. And so far, approximately zero of them have actually left Twitter. A powerful example of integrity. But we'll keep you posted, as this number is expected to climb to staying at zero by the end of the year. And in We Need to Control You More Because of <coughs> News, 
The state of Massachusetts is facing a lawsuit for allegedly illegally installing <coughs> tracking spyware on over 1 million phones. In addition to violating personal privacy rights, this sneaky move has also violated personal property rights as the spyware takes up storage space on users' phones without their permission. There should be nothing to be concerned about though, as the case is expected to be thrown out of court under the precedence of people shouldn't have rights anymore. And if the recent G20 summit filled with the world leaders you trust the most, Biden and the other leaders signed a declaration for global <coughs> passports. But it's probably better if you don't know too much about this just yet. Sometimes secrecy is what's best for public health. Well, let's do take a look and see what the largest donor to the Democratic Party, George Soros, has to say about it. COVID-19 also helped legitimize instruments of control. I can't tell by that clip. Is he technically still living? Well, those are jowls you can trust. Equally as trustworthy as the largest Democratic donor George Soros is, is the second largest donor to the Democratic Party, Sam Bankman Freed, owner of the crypto exchange FTX, which seems to be suffering from a few irregularities lately, probably due to the typical high levels of trustworthiness and honesty. Amongst other small irregularities, Sam McMahon Freed helped all taxpaying Americans also be donors to fund Democrats getting into office in the recent midterms. How? Well, it's spectacular. As you know, the Biden administration has sent tens of billions of dollars of your taxpaying money over to Ukraine. Ukraine then took some of that money and invested it in FTX, which is obviously a great investment. FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried then took some of that very clean money because it's been well laundered and gave it to Democrat campaigns. $40 million to be exact. So when you do the racist math on that, that doesn't make Sam Bankman Fried the second largest donor to the Democratic Party. It makes you the second largest donor because it was your money. And you should be grateful because you probably weren't going to choose to donate to Democrats that you don't want to see in office. However, some believe this criminal activity was illegal. So an investigation has been opened into Sam Bankman Fried and FTX. And luckily, the investigation committee is being led by Democrat Congresswoman Maxine Waters who you can see pictured here with the man she'll be investigating. She can also be seen in this picture from last year blowing a kiss to Sam Bankman Freed. So rest assured, we're about to have an in-depth, honest investigation where she works hard to find no wrongdoing. And in news from earlier this year, we'd like to take this opportunity to remind you that convicted sex trafficker Gisling Maxwell was trafficking minors to literally no one. Don't think too hard about that and don't think about it for too long. And that brings us to Thanksgiving racial profiling. While barely able to speak with a minority family on stage, Biden let the child of the family know that he could steal a pumpkin if he wanted to. Why did Biden think a Hispanic child wanted to steal a pumpkin? Ha <laughs> ha! We don't know, but we do have reports that Biden is an 80 year old white guy. And that brings us to our Thanksgiving Day tips of obedience. Brought to you by the New World Order. Tip number one. Instead of having a carbon positive turkey filled with nourishing protein, you should choose to malnourish your family with also carbon positive pretend meat because Bill Gates wants you to. Nothing says F you to your evolutionary biology like feasting off tofurkey. Tofurkey is also more inclusive than any other pretend meat as it's the transgender of the food community. It used to be a plant but now it identifies as meat. And if you don't like it, then you can go to fuck yourself. Alternatively, as you're planning your Thanksgiving meal, Klaus Schwab wants you to know that he'll also allow you to eat crickets. Tip number two, avoid getting together with friends and family. As we've recently just extended the emergency, we've just got to get through these first 15 days by doing the right thing. So fuck your family. Tip number three, Instead of being grateful for the blessings that this country provides, be resentful and entitled. You can better do this by focusing on oppression and inequality. Freedom sucks, inequality is better. It'd probably be better if you were in Iran, right? 
because they don't have inequality, which is exactly what's led them to get set to execute 15,000 protesters in a mass genocide. The US sucks, doesn't it? That's it for our Thanksgiving Day special report. Oh yeah, Arizona's Attorney General is refusing to certify their election for reasons we just can't get into right now. But please enjoy your fake meat today. It goes well with a fake democracy. Good night. What if God was one of us? Just a slob like one of us. Blue, 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 blue. Yeah, blah, blee, blee, blee.